I had been given some thought to how I could use a simple solar panel system to pre-warm the cold water tank in the roof so that the hot water tank drew in warm water and not cold water. To build a panel of this type out of basic everyday materials. My neighbours had the plumbers in and they were exchanging the domestic hot water tank for a new one and the copper cylinder was sitting on their drive when I realised applying the pi r squared formula that this cylinder contained a sheet of copper approximately a metre square. Cut off the top and bottom, remove the heat exchanger and we have a large flat sheet of copper. The area of the copper sheet was approximately 0.8 of a square metre and measured 1.3 by 0.66 metres. By laying it on the garage floor and a little bit of persuasion with a hammer and a piece of wood it could be flattened out into a nice usable sheet of material. Clean up the sheet with a wire brush and solder onto it copper pipes. Copper is one of the best conductors and when clean is very easy to solder with soft solder. Because of the way the copper pipe and copper sheet expanded and contracted with the heat it was rather like nailing a jelly to the wall. It was found easier to drill two, meter, two millimeter holes through the sheet and pin down the copper pipe with copper wire. A little bit of time and patience and all of the copper pipe was securely soldered to the sheet. It then required pressure testing the pipework was connected to mains water pressure and left for 24 hours. There was one minor weep. The next 24 hours of pressure test at full mains water pressure proved the system to be totally watertight. So we could move on to the next stage. Clean up the panel and spray with matte black paint. Build a 2x2 two two or 50mm square wooden frame onto which the panel could be mounted and insulated at the back. A frame was made out of UPVC sections and an acry clear acrylic panel fitted by screwing to the inside. Fit the acrylic picture frame and window over the top of the 2x2 panel and secure on all four sides with stainless steel screws. Then fill the back in with hardboard that had been coated with two coats of black paint. The panel and frame were sealed together using expanded polystyrene. Now we have a completed panel in its box ready for mounting. Our local non-ferrous scrapyard had a considerable quantity of 20mm aluminium angle 
which was ideal for making a frame onto which the panel could be assembled. Next was to carry out a ground test on a nice sunny day to see whether I could get a reasonable amount of heat out of the panel. I had acquired a small central heating circulating pump again for my friendly non-ferrous scrap dealer and I assembled this together with a bucket head tank with a heat exchanger and a garden trog. Here we see the heat exchanger which had been taken out of the hot water tank. The heat exchanger was put in the garden trog which was filled with water and after a matter of 10 minutes the water was quite warm after 20 minutes it was quite hot. This proved that the solar panel and the basic system would work. Next was to remove the cold water tank out of the attic space, clean it up and fit the heat exchanger. The, the cold water tank was refitted in the roof and piped up to a small header tank and pump. The solar panel and the heat exchanger pump and header tank were connected together using a good quality garden hose. Incidentally I had tested the garden hose at full 100 degrees temperature to see if it would degrade and it was quite happy at boiling point so it should be okay for the panel. This single panel worked successfully for over three years, three summers and three winters. It was filled with a mixture of water and antifreeze, two cans of car type antifreeze. Initially I had a thermostat on the back of the panel which would cut in the, the uh, pump at approximately 20 to 30 degrees C. However this proved unsatisfactory and I bought a resold digital controller which was only about 120 pounds and connected that into the circuit. The resole has a probe which is fitted in the panel which measures the temperature of the solar panel. It also has a probe which goes in the cold water tank. When the dif differential between the cold water tank and the panel is greater than six degrees it cuts in the pump. It also enables you to monitor via the LCD display the temperature of the panel and also of the cold water tank at any time. This unit proved to be extremely good and very reliable. After three years successful service the single panel was taken down and a duplicate made of it, not an exact duplicate. I actually removed the 10 millimeter copper pipes from the first one, the Mark I, and replaced them with 15 millimeter copper pipes to reduce the resistance and improve the flow so now I have two panels. The two panels were mounted on a common frame and connected in parallel. The original hardboard backing was replaced by aluminium sheet which proved to be far more successful. It's amazing what you can make from scrap 
copper hot water tanks from down the local scrapyard some pieces of UPVC from a DIY shop and some acrylic clear acrylic sheet again from the local DIY store with a little bit of help from Pete my son-in-law the panels were hoisted up onto the garage roof actually slid up two ladders onto the roof lifted into place and screwed down bolted down and connected up these two panels worked in this manner were close on five years that's counting the first one here you can see the aluminium frame bolted to a larger aluminium angle section which is then bolted down to substantial beams screwed to the roof relying on the BTH big thick and heavy and over engineer the system these two panels sat on the roof through gales rain snow and everything that the weather could throw at it as I said for close on five years when you design and build a system of this type as a DIY project there is always a lot of what-ifs and one of the what-ifs that kept coming to the fore was what if the solar panels exceeded 100 degrees C and the water started to boil in the cold water tank I think it didn't have to be a bloody hot day to do it however in order to produce belt and braces on the system I've installed a solenoid valve and a thermostat which would allow the uh, cold water tank to discharge into the terrace at the back of the bungalow in the event of the temperature in the cold water tank exceeding 80 degrees C I've never known this operate in five years but belt and braces it's always better to be safe than sorry the felted flat garage roof started to give problems as it was getting past its sell by date and it was replaced by a tiled pitched roof the homemade panels would not easily mount onto the tiles and it was decided to buy a commercial solar panel of approximately two square meters bearing in mind that the, the other two originals were 0.8 of a square meter so now we've gone up from 1.6 to 2 square meters and this panel in the latter part of the year has proved satisfactorily but in the main it has proved that the simple system of pre-warming -warm the cold water tank works and is a simple and economical method of solar heating.